Hey guys, thank you for showing up on such short notice. It seems that my timing with our last discussion was impeccable, considering what we'll briefly be discussing today. This new update with State of Decay 2 has some minor ramifications on what I'd advised the last time you visited. So, follow me, and we'll dive right in. Alright, so as we know, this new update has made some noteworthy additions, most of which, however, won't really apply to most of my past guides, aside from a series of new bounties, weapons, clothing, and dynamite, this update comes with difficulty sliders, which allows one to customize their gameplay experience to a more personalized level on three different fronts, action, map, and community. Now I won't go into too much detail here since nothing really changes for those who consistently play on the Nightmare Zone, which is what all of my guides have been focused on. But anyway, the action difficulty refers to the intensity and quantity of Zeds and Freaks one will encounter. The map difficulty influences scavenge resources and quantity of Plague Hearts, while community affects the effort required to maintain and excel one's group of survivors and influence acquisition. Now that last one is important. That is correct, Junior. Now, depending on one's difficulty setting, in our case, the Nightmare Zone, influence will be given a serious scarcity pill. In our previous discussion, I had provided a guide one can use to help themselves gain influence quickly with a particular system put in place in the Nightmare Zone. However, this update throws a little bit of a wrench in the operations. You see, in our last discussion, I emphasized the plan towards developing bulk play cures but the development process will create a significant tax on plague samples. So, a part of the guide was becoming adept at hunting freak sets, and I made the specification of hunting specifically for ferals and juggernauts. This is no longer feasible if one keeps their difficulty slider on the nightmare level. I had to do some experimentation to find out how bad the influence change is, and it's a bit of a nightmare in and of itself. Killing a bloater is worth two influence points, a screamer is also worth two influence points, ferals are worth ten, even infestations are only worth ten, and juggernauts are now worth a measly twenty-five. Well, Junior, even with the 20% increase from one's command center, the increases are negligible. Hunting down juggernauts and ferals, or any freak for that matter, is of little value now. One must either be a masochist, or just try to defend themselves. But nothing beats running, if you ask me. Now, the main purpose behind hunting juggernauts was not only for the influence, but also for their plague samples. Ferals, however, were purely for the influence. The only alternative I can recommend is hunting Blood Plague Zeds with a crossbow, the old-fashioned way. But if all Plague Hearts have been eliminated, only Plague Juggernauts will be able to provide samples. There really isn't much of an alternative here. However, on the plus side, secondary goals, survivor activity tasks, and mysterious signals all still reward influence in the three digits. Otherwise, freaks are not a lucrative means of acquiring influence. Now, given how low the payout is for freaks, if one is going to hunt juggernauts, only target the single ones and eliminate any other zeds close by with fire. If there are two, then I recommend one change their methodology. What has worked for me is to use stealth and a 50 caliber weapon with four rounds. Have both juggernauts lined up one behind the other and fire in the center. Both should go down and make their elimination rather simple. Just be prepared for any close by Zeds that may want to come greet you. Alternatively, one can whittle the plague hearts down to, say, the last one, to keep plague zeds around and harvest samples from them to save one from having to take on juggernauts. Mind you, though, plague hearts are a finite resource. 
Now, I can't lie, Junior. That is something I was worried about. I wasn't sure if the selling price for bulk play cures have also changed, but I was able to verify for myself, and yes, they still go at 500 influence for every unit sold. But as stated in the previous discussion, don't forget the basics of attaining influence. On a minor note, from what I can gather, there is going to be a new difficulty coming out in the future, and it sounds like it will be the polar opposite to the green zone, and worse than the nightmare zone. It is described as some sort of super horrific awful experience, let's just say. So chances are we will be revisiting some of our old discussions, and we may likely revisit this topic as well. Otherwise though, that is all this Onion has for you guys today. Thank you very much for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.